Bud Light getting called out for turning off YouTube comments for its new commercial featuring friends enjoying beer at a country music concert. It all comes as Bud Light sales are down 26% from a year earlier. That's not good. Outkick host Tommy Laren is good, and she joins me now. Tommy, what does that number tell you? What does disabling comments on America commercial tell you? Well, let's talk about the drop, first of all. That tells me that conservative consumers matter, and I think that Bud Light and all other companies out there are starting to realize that the hard way, that for so long, conservatives, we get angry and offended by things, but then we never do anything about it. We don't come together like the left does to send a message or make a statement, but now with this Bud Light commercial and this backlash, it shows that conservatives, in fact, do matter. Now, I will say this. I wish conservatives could come together and vote like they came together to boycott Bud Light. I think that would be maybe a better use of our time. But I will say this. The fact that Bud Light now wants to put out this country-themed commercial, like somehow that's going to make us forget about the man who dressed up to mock women, I think, quite frankly, that's insulting, and it's also, also patronizing. It's like, all right, here you go, conservatives, rednecks. We'll just have a country fried chicken commercial, and that should make you all feel better. But we won't actually acknowledge the mistake and the error that we made. So until they come out and they actually acknowledge it head on, conservatives are still going to be upset and we will not be drinking Bud Light. I can promise you that. We were joking that their advertisement for the 4th of July is going to be with every six pack you get an American flag. I, it's not a joke. They may actually do that. Uh, meantime, Montana transgender state lawmaker Zoe Zephyr just filed a lawsuit after being censured by state Republicans. Quote, the effort by House leadership to silence me and my constituents is a disturbing and terrifying affront to democracy itself. House leadership explicitly and directly targeted me and my district because I dare to give voice to the values and needs of transgender people like myself. Your take, Tommy. All right, so first of all, House leadership was well within their rights to do what they did. This leader broke the rules of decorum, and if this were a Democrat-controlled legislature, this is exactly what would have happened to a Republican. But let's go back to the comments that this legislature made to get themselves in this position. They said, when you pray that you will have blood on your hands because you want to keep children and minors from being mutilated and taking hormones and puberty blockers. So let's go back to the actual facts on the ground here. The fact that this represents would think that that was appropriate, would think that that was something that was even logical or realistic is disgusting to begin with. But again, this is also the same with the Bud Light story. Conservatives are finally realizing they have power, especially in a state like Montana. Here in Tennessee, we did the same thing. When you win elections, you have the power. Democrats do it all the time. They run roughshod, but then Republicans are supposed to sit back and give everyone the benefit of the doubt and let them have carte blanche and do whatever they want. No, I don't think so. Not in 2023. And hopefully not in 2024. But you raise a great point. The way of fighting back is not to say, we're not going to vote. That'll show them. That sort of doesn't work, as we have seen, if you're conservative. Tommy Laren, thank you for your insight. As always, we appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.